friends, family, intimate reading associates, what's going on? It's your man, it's Ian. Back at you with another fresh content drop. Today, folks, folks and family, family and folks, friends, folks, folks, we are going to be doing a 24 hour reading challenge. I've wanted to do this video, honestly, since I started. Uh, it's just taken me this long to do it, and I thought, let's just go for it. So, <clears throat> guidelines, rules. I've seen plenty of variations of this challenge. Some people will read for 24 hours straight. Some people will do it in segments where they'll read either six or 12 hours a day until it adds up to 24 hours. Some will go as far as they can, sleep, wake up, and go as far as they can until they hit it. With me, I'm going to attempt 24 hours straight. Now, that may not happen, who knows? So that will be the goal. But if I somehow break down and sleep or need to, need to take a nap or do whatever, um, I will do that. And yeah, I know some people are nitpicky. You know, with watching people do 24 hour challenges, they'll say, well, ooh, you didn't do it for 24 hours straight, therefore you didn't do the challenge. I think no matter what way anybody does this challenge, if you're reading 24 hours, if that took you a one day or three or five, it's, it's how However you want to do it, it's all subjective. So don't, don't come after me if I don't succeed at 24 hours straight through. Wish me so much luck and enjoy the video. Let's see what happens, shall we? Got my water. You gotta stay hydrated, you know what I mean? All right, let's freaking, let's get into her, shall we? Yeah, you guys ready? Am I stalling? Starting right, right, right now. We are one chapter in, already quite funny. Took me 20 minutes to get there, so hopefully we can breeze through this. And it's very, very readable. All of the main character is very witty, which I like witty characters. So her sarcasm throughout this whole thing is gonna be the driving force between, you know, for me to keep going, but this is already fun. The authors have described her familial relationships, and it is a messed up little family, let me tell you. In a comedic way, but also in a sad way. Parents, not divorced, but kind of separated because of adultery and cheating and her to her and her twin sister really only share looks uh, her twin sister Amelia gets everything but she works hard for it she's you know she's just a lucky person she just kind of she wins everything that she puts in for in a contest and she just has all the luck and all the friends and all the all the spotlight while Olive is a clumsy klutz of a, of a person um, so I'm excited to see how that pans out <laughs> been a little bit since I updated you all. We are an hour and 32 minutes in. Isn't that something? Isn't that something? Currently we're sitting at 85 pages in. I did take a little break in reading because Ashlyn and I got hungry and it's Friday. And Fridays we usually don't like to cook. We just like to go and spend money. So we went to Chick-fil-A, treated ourselves to a nice, delicious, romantic barat chicken sandwich date. And as we ate dinner, I, I continued to read. And what can I say at the moment? I forget what I left you off with, but so far I'm impressed. I'm very impressed with the writers. So Christina Lauren, for those of you who don't know, is actually two different ladies, Christina something and Lauren something, and they co-author everything that they write. But when you read it, it's it doesn't feel as if it's written by two different people. It feels very seamless in how the authors combine their talents together. And I can say it's they're very entertaining. This is a whimsical book. It's very witty. The main character is hilarious. There's just so many good one-liners that she has in her head or how she describes things. And it's just really, really funny because Christina and Lauren have done this amazing job of, of writing her character out to the point where just by how she speaks, you know that she she has a hard time of things sometimes because of her mouth or because of her thoughts or because of how awkward she is, because of how blunt she is. And she's just she's just that person that we all know that just seems to 
constantly have bad stuff happen to her. She just has crap constantly keeps hitting the fan for her, but she just, she just makes it through. And it's really funny. We just recently got done with the wedding and it ended horribly because everyone started throwing up or having diarrhea. Sounds like a great time. All because they had this toxin that they all ingested because of uh, toxic fish. And the only two people, would you believe it, that didn't partake in the festivities banquet was the, the main character, Olive, who is the maid of honor, and the groom's best man, who is actually his older brother, whom Olive hates with a burning passion. They are nemesis to one another. They do not like each other. They're the only ones who didn't get sick. Both of them are offered to go on the honeymoon from both the sick bride and the sick groom. Now, of course, there's some witty banter involved with this, but eventually they end up going. Let's get back to it, I guess. Almost stuck when this book come here. Alright, buddy. Alright, go ahead now. <laughs> Hate to disappoint you, bud. <laughs> this is so stupid. Two hours freaking in, guys. Holy moly. I'm quoting this. This is this is too good, guys. Hang on, where is it? <laughs> He stares at me for a lingering beat before seeming to decide whatever I'm going on about isn't worth it and turns to tow his shoes off near the door. I walk across the room and my feet on the carpet sound like boots crunching through knee-high grass. <laughs> is this a joke? Is every sound amplified in here? <laughs> what if I have to go to the bathroom? Do I turn on the shower to muffle the sounds? What if he farts in his sleep and I can hear it? What if I do? Oh gosh. <laughs> Why is that so good? Like we've all had those thoughts. Just reading them on paper through this awkward woman's... <laughs> Made of thought is so good. Why, hello? We are currently sitting at three hours, 16 minutes. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. Boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. 202 pages in, chapter 10, I believe. My gosh, this novel is reading super fast, super, super fast. You don't really want to put it down because the amount of awkward freaking situations <laughs> is insane. I mean, just when you think, okay, that was really awkward. There's no way it could get more awkward. It gets more awkward. And then it gets more awkward. And then it gets more awkward. And then guess what? Yeah, you called it. It gets more awkward. Something happens them on like the third or fourth day and it's just like there's no way to recover from that and they don't really <laughs> They just kind of fake it till they make it again and pretend like it doesn't happen. And now I'm getting to the point of the book where they're getting familiar enough with each other to where their barriers are kind of coming down and they don't seem to resent each other as much and there's not as much standoffishness going on. There's still some underlying tension enough to the point where they kind of accept each other but still semi-tolerate each other but at points really like each other and at other points go, oh yeah, I remember why I don't like you and I remember why I hate you. Yeah, I don't know, it's just cute. I'm literally reading this part in the book and I just update Ashlyn because, you know, she's curious. This is her book. She loved this book so much. So I update her from time to time about something I'm laughing at or, 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 or interested in. And so I, I tell her, oh, you know, they're just, they're just going on their drive because there's a scene where they rent a car and they go on a drive. And she goes, oh, oh, <laughs> how am I supposed to react to that? It's a romance book. I hope nothing too serious. <laughs> we are four minutes. Four hours and 54 minutes into it. But don't let that fool you. There was a freaking moment where I was reading probably a good hour and didn't realize that sucker was not running. Anytime I show you the, the clock from now on, just know it's actually an hour more. It's almost six hours, which is what I figured it would take me to read this book. The past few hours have flown by because this was incredibly entertaining. Uh, the wit, humor just had me laughing. Let's finish this. <laughs> I've been sitting in this spot for far too long, and I'm thinking it's time we have a change of venue. Right, so now we are clearly on a mattress. Why do we have a mattress, do you ask? Thought I'd pull it out because I want to be comfortable, and these chairs, though they are comfortable, I am not feeling anymore. So I thought I thought I could make this pretty comfy. Strap on in for American Psycho. <laughs> I don't know what the last time was 
else that I told you. Remember, we're sitting at six hours instead of five. Hey. What's going on? So I've come up with an idea. I am 36 pages in. If you couldn't tell, I am really slowing down so far. It is told from the perspective of Patrick Bateman, first person. You know, nothing crazy has happened yet. You're getting a lot of this 80s culture in Manhattan. These people are vain. They're so conceited. Ellis describes what everybody's wearing. What kind of shirt, what kind of blazer, what kind of trousers, what kind of shoes, what kind of tie, what kind of hair clips, what kind of glasses, what kind of kerchief for the using. Even the women, same thing. And, and these people really care about what you look like, what your status is. And I'm, I'm excited to see where the twistedness comes in and see where Patrick Bateman starts, for lack of a better term, murdering people. I hate to say that, I'm excited for that, but I, I've, I've heard so much about this, I just wanna see how it goes. So yeah, but what I'm gonna do, and I'm going to put the headphones in, I'm gonna find my place in the audiobook, and then maybe play some Mario Kart, get my get my butt destroyed by the friggin' AI, because it cheats, so let's do it. <laughs> It is 3.27 in the morning, uh, and I've been listening to this audiobook while playing Mario Kart and getting absolutely wrecked. Nothing new there. I am only 86 pages in. We're sitting at eight hours in. This thing is reading so slow. I just don't know. All it's been so far is, is it's Patrick Bateman, he's just, he's just been going to lunch dates, dinner dates with all these different women, which I thought he was dating some woman named Evelyn. So if he is, he's, he's cheating. He's hanging out with his scummy Wall Street friends that all they care about is women's body parts. They say the foulest things about women and they say really stupid things to each other and they all they, all they care about is what each other has on and oh, I have this, I paid $850 for something that you only paid $750. I have a tanning bed in my apartment. Oh, but I don't. I have a tanning membership. I have a gym membership. It's so, so tedious. Holy crap. Like it really is annoying. I just listened to a chapter where he goes to the dry cleaners and he's he's turning in a shirt that has blood on it and sheets from his own bed that have blood on them. And he's asking these the, the people if they can get these blood stains out. And I'm thinking, there wasn't anything described, but I'm thinking he murdered the girl that he went on this date with the night previous. But the thing is, where is that? Where is that? Like, I'm not, I'm not out here fiending for murder. Like, I don't condone it. But it's called American Psycho. But all this is, is this materialistic, vain, self-absorbed idiot who thinks he's God's gift to, to the earth. Cream of the crop, top pickups. And you're telling me you just pass over the murder? If that's even what happened? Like, I'm kind of upset about that. I'm gonna keep going, but if I have to keep up, if I have to put up with this for eight more hours, I don't think I'm gonna continue this book. It's definitely not what I thought so far. I thought, I thought at least by 86 pages, there'd be something, something. Let's get back freaking to it. <laughs> No. No, absolutely not. The scene that I just listened to was indescribably grotesque. I'm not even into the third act. I cannot describe to you what I just read, and I won't. It's too obscene and it's too disturbing for, for anyone. I have no words. I, I was wanting the psychotic stuff to show up, and once it did, I regret it. Cannot continue. The murder. I'm a fan of Grimdark. I, I like Joe Abercrombie. I like Mark Lawrence. And yeah, they go in a little bit of detail, but not like this. This is like the diary of, of an actual serial killer that does grotesquely unnatural fetish-esque things. So you get this juxtaposition of this insanely boring day-to-day -day lifestyle that he lives as a, as a upper middle class socialite. And then when the actual murders happen, they're the most shocking thing. This is an awful book. How is there so much praise for this? Horrible. What I'm gonna go into now, I think, is A Quarter Frost and Starlight. Brief little novella. I think we're gonna plow through this. It's gonna be good. And I am excited. I still can't get over how freaking garbage that book was. <laughs> Our 
girl Feyre. Holy crap. Oh my gosh. Meesh. Meesh hack. Meesh. Meesh. Hey big goofball. Guys, I will admit it. I took a nap. I think you would too if you were in my position. We did finish Frost and Starlight. Quick, easy, little novella. Very whimsical. You know, coming back into the world of, of Akatar. It's, it's like a warm welcome. Because these characters are so memorable. And I haven't seen them or been with them for months. This one was interesting. It was like a Christmas story. You're with the characters. Uh, I don't know if it's like, like a few months or something. After the events of the third book. It's just really lighthearted. You know, you get perspectives from all of the people. People in the inner circle. Feyre, Reese, Cassian, Azrael, all of them. They're in the night court and it's snowing outside and they pretty much have this, you know, they're all preparing for this thing called the winter solstice which is essentially Christmas pretty much. And that's pretty much it. To be honest, I'm gonna jump into Jade War. I'm already like 130 pages into this so we're just gonna tackle this for the remainder of our time. We actually have, we're actually sitting at 11.52 because of that hour that I missed during the Honeymooners. So we're pretty much halfway. I think we can crank out Jade War in that time. What do you say? Well folks, what can I freaking say? We are chapter 19 in Jade War, page 173. I think I was like 124 or something like that earlier. What can I say about this book? Dude, the politics in Jade War outshine the politics of Jade City. Jade City was a great introduction to the series. Reading Jade War just makes me really excited for Jade Legacy. But holy crap, the politics is so well done in this. It's hard for me to describe what's going on without giving spoilers away but I'm gonna say we've got mob clans doing business transactions with foreign governments. Fonda Lee has done such a marvelous job of crafting an authentic and realistic I don't even know how to do like foreign policy foreign economics in this world it's so real and it's so amazing and I will say dude my favorite character Shay is in my top five maybe even my top three female characters of all time. Shay is a boss lady she is so impressively crafted and she's a green bone warrior which means she can kick some trash in the first book she was kicking trash and she's doing that in the political arena in this book so I'm excited to finish this today I started this on a whim and I'm so excited that I get to actually do this for this challenge since American Psycho was the fattest disappointment ever we will see how this goes right now I'm gonna take a break rejuvenate myself and we will get back to it so yeah that's what we're gonna do That's, that's the good stuff. Good Lord. I feel doubly refreshed. All right. <laughs> Blasted allergies. What? <laughs> what? Fonda Lee has a talent for throwing me off course. And I, I really like to guess where things go sometimes in my head. And I thought this was gonna go in one direction and she swerved on me last second. That's not how I saw it. I did not think, holy crap. More water, Cugsy. Well, let's get another montage in, shall we?
some peeps. <laughs> Guys, it's at 16 fetching 53. <laughs> Stuff is hitting the fan. Ay, yeah, yeah. What is about to go down is insane. All right, all. We are sitting 21 hours, 43 minutes. Good news. We have made serious, serious headway. We're at chapter 43, page 424. Jade War, bro. The politics are getting serious. The familial ties are kind of getting a little frayed. Personal relationships are shattering and ending because harsh truths are coming out about really wicked decisions that were kept from certain individuals. I will say, everything in a Fonda Lee book seems to have tremendous consequences. Everything has high stakes. Literally everything. Because these people belong to such a high profile family, their lives are so high stake from the beginning. You can feel the tension about to rip open and it's about to get real up in here. I cannot wait to be done. Not only with the book, but with this freaking challenge. This book, this book, the freaking consequences for the actions that people make. I, I don't think I've ever read a book with higher stakes, like ever. <laughs> For those of you who've read Jade War, you probably know exactly what I'm freaking out about. My goodness. I'm speechless. I'm without words. I knew Shay was strong, but I didn't know that Shay had that inside of her. I feel so sorry for her. I feel so bad. You guys, you gotta pick up this series. Greenbone Saga, man. It's worth every minute of your time. All right, folks. It's been a freaking while. I don't think it's on. Oh, it is. It's recording. <laughs> <laughs> Folks, it's been a while. I haven't updated you since probably last night. It is currently like 7.30 the following evening. I will say last night, I got super close. I'm talking like so close, probably over 23 hours. Sleep hit me, it took me, and I never looked back. That means I didn't necessarily complete 24 hours. This turned from like 24 hours straight into more of a 24 hour readathon over like two days. I failed, I failed miserably. Nah, I'm joking, I did, I did pretty well for my first one, almost, almost 24 hours. I just couldn't, man. I was so, so tired. Where, might you ask, did I end up in Jade War? I ended up at chapter 49 on page 464. I have like 120 pages left. This challenge was super fun. Yeah, I thought it, would, it was gonna put me in a slump but it's actually motivated me to just read more. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Let's recap. The first book that we read was The Unhoneymooners by Christina and Lauren. This book was my very first attempt at a romance novel and it is a romance comedy. And boy, was it funny. It was hilarious. It's a, I would say it's five stars out of five stars for the comedy. There were some things about the book that I did not enjoy. They're in close proximity with each other a lot and they're both attractive to each other. She hates him, but she lusts after him. And I I did not enjoy any of that really. I did not enjoy this tension building within her. I didn't want description. I didn't want details of her admiring his chest, admiring his abs, admiring his back, his shoulder muscles, his tans, his blood, his blood, his blood, his blood. It's, it was, it got really annoying. This, the second thing that I was kind of unsatisfied with, I guess, was they became an, an item real fast. Of course, by the end of it, you knew they were going to, so that's not a spoiler, but it just, to me, it seemed like it was really, really fast. Whereas I thought it was gonna happen like right at the end of the novel, just like all the movies, you know, the guy finally gets the girl, or in this case, the girl finally gets the guy. Overall rating of the book, I give it a 3.5. It was good, it was enjoyable, and I would recommend it. There were some scenes that you have to skip if you're not into the romantic evenings. Uh, as we should say. Next book I attempted, I did not finish, was American Psycho. This book was complete trash. <laughs> It seemed like the first 90 pages was the same scene over and over and over, just a different setting with different people. This book tries to explore the upper middle class in the 1980s. It was all about what can I buy, who can have the fanciest stuff, and it seemed like 50% of what I did read, it was all just describing the fancy things people were wearing. Just 
paragraphs and paragraphs of what people are wearing. And it was, it was so tedious. But then in the middle of this comes these insane scenes of torture and violence that just, I mean, that made me want to throw up. Takes it to a freaking whole nother level. The torture and the, the, just the brutality and how he makes it a sexual thing really disturbed me. And so I, I knew I wasn't going to be able to finish it. So I DNF'd it. I give it zero stars, but of course on Goodreads, you have to give it at least one. So that's, that's a false advertisement on, on my Goodreads. This is a zero star. Regretting that I ever wasted my time with it. I thought it was going to be something that it was not. Next is The Court of Frost and Starlight. This is the novella in the Akatar series by Sarah J. Mass. This was awesome. This was just a nice little whimsical reintroduction for me of some of the beloved characters of that series that I'd been missing. And you just get some perspectives from them. You learn some little tidbits that you didn't know about before in the other books. And it kind of primes you for the next one. So I'm excited to get into Silver Flames. That is actually going to be in a few days that I get into that. This I would give 3.5 out of 5 as well. Maybe 3.75 actually. Because I just like the characters so much, but I, you know, it's, it wasn't really anything special. But to me, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't, it didn't have that ugh of the other books, but of course it wouldn't. It's a novella and it's not, it really wasn't meant to be that, so I can't really hold that against it. I will finish this soon. This is well on its way to be a freaking five out of five. This is such a good book. It's a very good sequel. I, honestly, I think I like it better than Jade City. Fonda Lee has a propensity to keep blowing my mind. She's one of those authors that you cannot predict what's gonna happen. You just, you can't. Jade War is a blessing. It is amazing. And Greenbone Saga as a whole, the trilogy, is ending up becoming quickly one of my favorite trilogies of the year. It's probably getting close behind Red Rising. It's that good. All right, folks, we did it and we didn't do it. This was a crazy challenge. I see why people don't like doing it. I can see why a lot of YouTubers who do do this challenge or make this kind of video don't just do a 24 hour straight because that is hard. I read the equivalent of pretty much 24 hours, but I didn't do it straight. I pretty much took naps and fell asleep and... But all right, people, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for supporting this. This is such a cool thing. This community is still growing so much and I cannot thank you enough. I love you all so much. I love the, the friendships that are forming and the discussions that are being had and the recommendations that are being shared. Um, honestly, I love having you guys on Goodreads. I love having you guys message me on Goodreads. I love having you guys, you know, I love seeing what you're reading and I love seeing what how you're reviewing it. I love seeing your ratings and I'm sure you, you know, vice versa, you reciprocate that. So if you haven't yet, yeah, come on. Come on over to Goodreads. Find me. It's just my name. But guys, gals, ladies, gents, there will be more content like this in the future. I will try eventually to just do a straight through. But man, stick around. Stick around for more. Love you guys. See you in the next one.